Good morning or afternoon or evening, no matter where you're tuning in from. I wanted to take you on a little personal journey today because I have been reoriented, or maybe it's like a little bit of a reunion, with some things that I have not had in my possession for a very long time. And I thought it would be enjoyable to show you what they are. Okay, I'll give you a bit of a back history. These are some of my old field notebooks or nature notebooks. So these are the notebooks that I kept as a kid, in some cases as a preteen to teenager. And I don't have all of the books in my possession and I don't have all of my collections in my possession. But I have to say when I got them, I was like smiling from ear to ear because it really took me down memory lane and it made me in a way like miss. I was definitely nostalgic. I missed some of the time that I afforded myself when I was a kid to spend in nature and to really record and observe what I was taking in as a child. So give you a little bit of a back history and how I got reoriented to these notebooks. I hadn't seen my mom in a very long time. So she lives in Ohio. I've lived in Pennsylvania and uh, New York, of course. And I probably spent the most time with her after I graduated from college. But after that, she never saw what I was uh, doing in Brooklyn. She never came to Brooklyn or New York City. I mean, she's not a city girl. She probably wouldn't want to ever drive to New York City. She wouldn't know what to do there. And um, she hadn't seen what we were doing here at Flock Finger Lakes, which is my sister channel, Flock Finger Lakes, what we're building in central upstate New York. And I knew she would really love what we're doing and really vibe with what we're doing. My mom's a huge gardener. She loves being out in nature. She's not really in, she's more in a suburb right now outside of Cleveland. So she's not necessarily in the country, although she has like nice gardens like in her front lawn. There's a lot you could do with a little bit of lawn as you all know, and, and a little bit of space indoors, as you all know. But uh, I kind of guilted her because I was like, you have to really see what we're building. Like, I, I would love for you to drive out here and see what we're doing. Well, she drove out here and she actually came and <laughs> weeded the orchard, which was really lovely because I needed somebody to help weed the orchard before the season ended. And she was bringing some of my old books, my old notebooks, my old school notebooks, I mean, old clothes, like, you know, my dolls, <laughs> things that I definitely, a lot of things that I definitely don't need to store here. But um, the things that I really loved being re-engaged with or reoriented with or uh, have a reunion with is some of my old books because I am definitely a book hoarder. And I have a lot of the old books that I have now would be a lot of the old books that I'd be reading now as well. Or a lot of the books that I had back then are the books that I would be reading or want now. And I had extensive books as a kid. Uh, you know, I'm of the generation where we grew up slightly without computers when I was younger. And uh, I lived in, a, in an area that only had like I mean, there were kids in different school districts that had lots of computers, but like I was in a school district where there was like one computer at the library and that was about it. Uh, but I ended up getting a computer and, you know, like all the clip art and stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, you'll see some of the clip art <laughs> come through here. But I have some really cool hand drawings in my field notebooks. And, uh, and, and I don't know, I just have to say this is really cool and I wanted to show this to you because a number of you had questions in the past about how I gained some information and, you know, and it just wasn't, wasn't just all throughout college. It was as a young girl and in, in grade school and then all the way up through high school and, of course, then into college afterwards. And, and, I'm, and you're always learning. I mean, you're always learning. If you have the curiosity and you have the, uh, you know, a, a certain skill set to go and find the information or to um, even practice outdoors, then you'll be able to gain more insight, essentially. So uh, these are not all of my books, and I don't have all of my, so I just pulled like two notebooks, essentially, that I think are the most interesting. And and, and, you know, as a kid, I was interested in everything. I wanted to know about the mushrooms. I wanted to know about 
birds and animals and insects and plants. And, uh, and I was really interested in Native American culture, so it was really cool to see all of the books that my mom brought. Most of them were like Native American culture and also nature books. And then I had a bunch of drawing books as well. So you'll see some of that shortly because I don't really draw much any longer. It's, it's kind of crazy, but like the time I spent as a child observing nature, writing about nature and drawing nature is so much more than what I do now. And I think there's just like way more distractions nowadays. And I can't even imagine, like I, I'm trying to imagine if I was growing up as a kid now, would I have these extensive notebooks? And so, no, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably be recording everything on a computer. And there's something about drawing that helps you internalize the information more. There's something about note-taking that helps you retain information more. And I have to say, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't retained all of the information in these uh, binders or these notebooks. I mean, can you imagine a binder? Does anybody even use these anymore? <laughs> it's crazy. So here's one and here's the other. And uh, this one is a bit more recent, I would say. This is right before I went to college. But let me show you, look at that little drawing that I did. So I had like, you could see it's printed, Mycological Perspectives. And then I have a hand drawing that I did in like colored pencil. And yeah, I mean, these are just some of the things that I did. But you, you could see I have notes on how to collect and study fungi. And then you could see that I have all of these pictures that I cut out. And I, it's just pretty neat to see. So here I have some pressed spore prints and also mushrooms that I had pressed. So you could see that there's an earth star up above and then I have a bolete. What is that below? A puffball with spores. I think this is just pretty cool to see. I have some photography so you could see one of the fungus here on the trees. I don't think I identified that one. And then I even have the different types of caps on fungi, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's just, it's basically like a little field guide, but even if you have these imagery within field guides, it's really helpful to draw them so that you can internalize some of the names of the different types of fungi so it's easier when you're actually out in the field to be able to ID them without even maybe having an identification guide. I mean, then I'm like, you know, play on words. I'm lichen, lichen. I mean, obviously you haven't heard that one before. Yeah, and it says here that these are unique combinations of two distinct species, an alga and a fungus. But like, I think we know now lichen is usually a collection of different algae and different fungi. So it's not just like one species of algae and one species of fungi. I think it's, uh, it's a, a number of them. And then I have a glossary that I had printed out from some website of all the different glossary terms that you would have for fungi, which, you know, it's a, it's a study unto itself. So I was really into mycology. In fact, I thought I wanted to do mycology. I think it was my eighth grade bio teacher who was really into fungi and he got me really excited about fungi and so I started to learn more about that and you know I kind of lost a bit of that along the way unfortunately like as I as you start to go out into the quote unquote real world and start doing other things you you there's only so much time in the day but I have to say when I was reoriented with this these books in particular or seeing some of my old reading material, even my old drawing books, my, my paint, my mom brought some of my acrylic paints in my paint box and my art bags and things like that. Like there's something so nostalgic about it because I know, like let me tell you how I was as a kid because I think for anybody who's younger and thinks like, oh, I feel so odd or whatever. <laughs> as a kid, I would spend almost all of my time outdoors. I mean, usually from the morning until 
it got dark. And then, um, unless I was drawing. And if I were drawing indoors, I, I don't think I would ever like draw outdoors. I would typically draw indoors. Even if I took field notes, I would maybe do some quick sketches outdoors and then I would bring all the stuff indoors and then draw it even better. The same thing with my notes. Like I really liked, I hated messy notes. I always wanted to take clean notes. I take messy notes now compared to what I did when I was a kid. So when I would draw, I would draw for like eight or nine hours and I would not stop. And I think a lot of probably artists can relate to that. Especially if I was drawing like a face, I love drawing old faces or uh, nature scapes or things along those lines. So I would draw those and I, I would draw for eight or nine hours straight. Uh, I didn't have a TV, I only had a little radio. So sometimes I would play the radio, but most of the time, and, and that radio actually also had like a cassette player and like a little uh, CD player, <laughs> back in the old school, right? And then I would just play nature sounds. And I had this one uh, uh, cassette that would play nature sounds where it'd be like pickerel frog. And then it would play what the pickerel so frog sounded like, or it would be yellow rumped warbler. <laughs> play what the yellow rumped warbler would sound like. And it helped me learn some of the sounds of birds. So I could identify them if, even if I didn't see them in the trees for instance. So I think that was um, really helpful. So I would sit listening to that and I would draw for eight or nine hours. Or if I went outside, I would go outside if it was nice out. I would go outside from like seven in the morning until it was dark. And my mom would sometimes have trouble getting me inside the house. Um, and then when I was a little bit older, I would still do that. And in the summer months, I had no friends over. I didn't have any friends over in the summer. And when I was, a, I would say, when I went to um, like middle high school, so seventh grade through 12th would be considered our middle and high school. We didn't have a middle school, it just was like seventh through 12th. And I had no friends over in the summer, never. I never had any friends over in the summer. So in the summer months, I would just be outdoors taking notes, making observations, doing drawings, all that kind of stuff. So you could say I had no life, but for me, that was really wonderful. It was a really wonderful life. Okay, so here, clip art, <laughs> clip art alert. <laughs> Look at that funny clip art. So these are wildflower perspectives. You could see that I went wild on the clip art there. And then here's another drawing. This is probably getting some reflections on this, but this just shows some flower parts, so you could see the, the pistils, the stigma style ovary, and the stamens, the anther, and the filament, so you could see the male and female parts. And then if you go to the next page, you'll see that I have a fruit drawing, and this actually shows you what happens when it's fertilized. So that's pretty cool. And then you'll actually even see, I have this binder, and I have, this is when I started studying a lot of the herbs. So I have these, I guess, you know, would call a Materia Medica. These, this was my early Materia Medica. You know, you have Colt's foot here, you have bouncing bet. And then I have all this uh, vocabulary. I was a really big into vocabulary, really loved reading about words. And I even read the dictionary twice. <laughs> I had nobody to share words with, so I couldn't converse with folks, but I, would love reading about words and just like the origin of words and the history of words. So that was very cool. So I have all this uh, vocabulary of the reproductive parts of plants. And then I just have some quizzes here that I printed out. And then you'll see, and this is actually, these are preserved really well. So you could see this is probably part of my Materia Medica. This is Oswego tea or bee balm, Monarda. So I have all these pressed plants and this looks like a eupatorium. I don't have all these names, so it looks like this is kind of like unfinished, unfortunately. But, well, this is a jewel weed, and this is a buttercup. <sighs> Maybe some type of clover, and this is a type of vetch, and I don't know, star flower maybe? I don't really know what all these are. This looks like a cone flower. Yeah, so I have all these pressed flowers, and, and that's something I really liked doing. I still like doing it, but I just don't make the time for it. But I find when I leave the city, 
which I'm spending less and less time in the city, and I'm here, I start to make more time for that type of stuff. Um, now I'm often busy filming and shooting things like this and all that kind of stuff, but, um, and then editing. Editing takes a huge time, but I've already said that already on this, on this channel. But uh, yeah, I'd love to, what I'm saying is I'd love to re-engage with this. Here's something, I have this ABA field notebook. This looks like it's from maybe like 1997, 98. I was probably 13 or something. I, so I was young. So you could see that this is some of those bird foraging methods. So it's swoop, surface dips, aerial pursuit. And then you could see some of my early sketches. So you'll see if I've <laughs> improved over the years. <laughs> And you'll see some uh, bird shapes here. So if you're looking at birds flying in the sky, you could see some different types of silhouettes. Yeah, and I, I, you know, and it's really funny because when I came here to this land, I started to see birds that I had never seen before. Oh my God, look, like I, I was like sure that we had bufflehead, okay? I was like, oh my God, that's a bufflehead. Then you go with the zoom lens and you also have hooded mergansers. Insane, no way. Oh man, I'm gonna put that into my bird list. So I was like, oh my gosh, I need to keep a species list. So this is very sim similar. So look at that, isn't that so sweet? It's just these little birds. So it's like summer's field notes. <laughs> I have to say, I, I, I enjoy this. This is something that really reminds me of the things that I absolutely loved as a child and that I would hope to return to and maybe with a little bit more sophistication. Yeah, but this is this is so cool. It looks like I didn't even finish this book as well, but I had really some extensive field guides and I don't know if my mom still has them in her possession. She said that some things might actually be in storage and we could have lost those. So, you know, that's unfortunate. But the fact that I've been uh, reoriented with some of the, my old books, uh, a lot of my old herb books, which is really nice to see because I have been relearning, I would say, or educating myself again about herbs. A lot of things that I've known and you just kind of have to wipe the cobwebs away. Yeah, I mean, these are just really delightful to see. What I have to say, I'm just rambling at this point, but I just wanted to show you these because I think that seeing these makes my heart happy and really allows me to reflect on some of the things that I, I lost over the years or that like kids have lost over the years. Um, I think people are gonna be less likely to wanna go and keep these field notebooks. I could be wrong, but I think kids are probably more on their devices now and you might learn that way, um, but I also kind of feel like you're more easily distracted. And I'm easily, more easily distracted. I would say if you took me as a 10, 11, or 12 year old, for instance, versus, you know, decades from then, I probably had more attention span <laughs> and more discipline as a 10, 11, or 12 year old, which is crazy to think. So I don't know. Um, maybe it just is applied differently, but that's it. I just wanted to show you that little personal journey. I, it delights me. It may not delight you the same type of way, but at least it gives you a, a bit of an indication of kind of how I was as a kid and you know, returning to this channel and to what we're doing at Flock. Uh, it really delights me to be able to do the things that I was interested in as a child and being able to express that now. If, if I was able to do that back then, I would have, but we didn't have those options. So uh, the fact that I'm able to return to that, I'm just so grateful. And I'm grateful to all of you as well who tune into this channel, who are interested in this kind of stuff, because I think it's so important, so important to be connected back to nature, to be able to give ourselves the time to observe other organisms, to feel like we are really connected to the earth. That is so grounding. And the ability to be able to do that in this day and age is so healthful and is calming. Uh, so that's where I'm going to leave it. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you again, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a great holiday.